Hello, Asha fans. Dylan Pescatore here, the broadcaster for Asha, here with Asha president, Kenny McGinley. Kenny, how are you doing today here almost at the start of September? I'm great, Dylan. It's good to see you. Um, us talking means that hockey's right around the corner, so that's exciting for me. And uh, uh, we missed you this off season. We hope you had a good one and ready to go with hockey. How was your off season? I know last season ended around March, April, with all the championships over at Mullet Arena. How did you uh, spend your time down before everything starts getting going again? Yeah, mine was fantastic. We had a, a couple hockey camps and and some USA hockey stuff early in the off season, and then the rest of it was uh, just a challenge to myself of how much golf I could play and how many different places I could play and visit. Uh, I would say I succeeded in that, and now I'm I'm back here in uh, in Arizona, ready to spend the next few months in the rink. Love it. So last season, of course, it was a huge success. You had every single championship in Mullet Arena for D1. You had the whole playoffs in Mullet Arena. You had a few really good games as well. What were you most proud of from last season in terms of everything, running it and the games and the players and the teams and everything? Yeah, I mean, I think we're at the point now where we're trying to find ways to challenge ourselves and push ourselves each year to make it better instead of just repeat the same thing. And obviously two years ago was the first championship at mullet and that was amazing and so last year we stepped it up a notch to what you said uh all the d1 games at mullet and all the other divisions there um and with that became a whole list of challenges that i took for granted when when operating a building that big um and and all the logistical stuff that goes along with that um but the amount of like positive enthusiasm from parents, players, um, you know, the part that I think I'll never forget was one of those first quarterfinal games, a kid walks down the hallway and looks up at the building and and right before they're about to go on the ice and like, just had that like, Oh my God, look in his eyes. of like, this is real. Um, and being able to offer that experience to however many players got to play there. Um, and, and especially to the lower divisions that, you know, maybe some of these kids like that's the, that's the peak of their, hockey endeavors and that's totally all right and that's awesome that you know they got to be ASU or what was last year NHL superstars in that building for the day um so huge victory for us I think we're in a unique position where we're the only ones in town in Arizona that can do something like that and operate a building that way um and grant that opportunity so now the challenge is how do we make it better for this year that's another thing, of course, with Coyotes moving over to Salt Lake City. It's ASU, and for high school, of course, it's it's only us. It's only Asha. Do you take any sort of you know more responsibility now to push the game of hockey without that NHL team in the area? Yeah, I think we just have to be very conscientious of like in the past we we had that backbone behind us of we had the NHL here, um, we had the assurance that hockey was was cemented in town and that our customer base was going to be there and, and year over year would continue to be there. Um, obviously in my lifetime in your lifetime and in all of our players lifetime, we've never had the day where no NHL hockey was there to, to drive that. Um, fortunately I'm optimistic that it's not going to hinder us very much. Like we've got such a solid footprint not just with high school hockey, but hockey in Arizona in general. And, you know, we're fortunate that ASU has give, been given the time to create their footprint here. Um, and, and you know, it's it's different now than what is in the early 90s where, you know, with social media and, and TV and viewership, like, like, even though we don't have a team locally, we still are connected to a team or like whatever team that might be. Um, so I think the sport's in a good spot. I think hockey's in a good spot. I think we have a long road ahead of us before we see negative ramifications. Um, but we still have to, you know, push the envelope and not rely on that NHL name behind us and the superstars that come with it to carry the workload there. It's like, we gotta, we gotta put more effort in. In terms of superstars, you with team Arizona last year was another huge success. You brought two teams over to Dallas had a great tournament. Each team got to play upwards of five games. And that team, Copper team, went and won the championship at the showcase with players moving on to play at higher levels, professional levels. From you, and you've been around the league for a while now, seeing these players move on to the next level of hockey, how does that make you feel? Yeah, um, obviously, terrific event there. And and kind of like we talked about with our playoffs, like it's that challenge of how do we make it better every year. And three years ago, we we had a heck of a showing at, at showcase losing in the semifinals and 
followed it up the following year again and 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 now went in it like we're we're on this path where we were surprised in year one but pleasantly surprised and and now it's expected like we go there with expecting success and how do we keep pushing that along um the like the players i think are gravitating towards it because of the opportunity to go play elsewhere i think that's hopefully everyone's goal in in playing hockey is to play as long as possible um you know or at least i like, hope that's the goal is is to keep playing and you know we're unfortunate that we don't have many options with the exception of college here in arizona like we don't have any junior options for our players to play um and so they're not as well versed in it being close to home so we're trying to bring those players to the opportunities and and you know bring bring those um bring that source to them so that they can find a home to keep playing as long as possible um obviously I don't need to explain how great the game is and how it's unique that, that those opportunities exist. Um, and we want to see as many of our players keep chasing it as long as possible, as long as they can, uh, before they end up in an adult league with the rest of us. And, you know, there's plenty of time for that later, but there's only one time to play, play junior hockey and college hockey. And a lot of players from team Arizona over the years have moved on to those levels, including last year's team, uh, everyone was talking to scouts after the game. They were coming to the locker room. It was a great experience. Last year was great, but now moving on to this year after the off season, what excites you personally? What is really something that drives you every day to say, wow, we're going to make this season so much better. Can you give us maybe one thing that is really exciting about this year coming up? Yeah, that's a good question. I almost, almost don't have like a definitive answer right now. I think, you know, each year that I've been in, fortunate to be in this role like I've had one thing that's like here's our goal for this year you know it goes back to rebranding and kind of like upping our curb appeal a few years ago to then um, you know like obviously our playoffs at mullet and our championship there like that's kind of turned into one of our marquee events um, and and I don't want to say like we've mastered some of those but like like we checked some of those boxes and and I don't know what what the empty box is for us right now like we're we, we grew by one team this year and we're max. We can't grow any more than that at this current state with how much ice we have. Um, our, our playoffs are, you know, I think we can continue to keep pushing them to get better. I think a huge part of it is what you offer and what you do and what Ben Smith does for us and like broadcasting more games and kind of, you know, opening up those opportunities. And so I would say this year, like if anything, it's like, how do we take the things that we're doing well and make them better? Like the past few years, it's what are we missing? How do we create those this year? It's like, like, how do we make everything better than what it is? Um, you know, our social media has been good for a few years with, with Jenna and what she does. Like, how do we take that up a notch? How do we take our play by play and, and announce and our streaming of games? How do we take that up a notch? Um, how do we take our, our team Arizona teams and, you know, our, our, skill development or player development stuff like how do we how do we just keep raising the bar because i'm just a believer and since i've been involved in this like standing still is just not not the right thing to do i think we for years this organization did that for a long time and it got us to this point and that's great we could just float by and stand still or we can just keep pushing and go forward um as much as we can as you're looking to push forward of course kind of explain to us i know uh when registration starts it's it's crazy. People are looking to sign up as quickly as possible. What was the time frame between when registration opened and when it was full? Yeah, that is my least favorite day of the year um, for, for various reasons. But uh, yeah, this year we, we sold out our main registration in 17 minutes, um, which improved last year's time by three minutes. Um, and uh, I'm not sure we can physically go any faster than that. Um, uh and then obviously we start a wait list after that and, and we spend the, the remainder of the summer placing as many of those players onto teams and whatnot as possible. And we get, you know, 98, 99% of those players placed uh, on a home. Um, it's the most unfortunate part about this league, this association, and, and this role is that situation because we would love to just open our arms and say, everybody come on in. We'll take everybody. Um, reality, I think everyone understands it's not possible because ice is a, you know, is a finite commodity that we don't have control over. Um, 
those so therefore the plane spots are finite um and and vice versa we've operated for 25 years as a as a no cut league like you know we 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 allow players to play um regardless of playing ability we're the only place for for players aged 16 17 18 who want to play hockey like to play without having to qualify and try try out for a team um whether or not any of that will change in the future i can't answer um at least as of today that's how it is um so it's my least favorite day of the year once we get past it once we start playing games then it then it kind of becomes a, a distant memory until next may um but uh, and, you know at least taylor swift still still has us beat with the sellout times um but uh we did get we did get likened to taylor swift concerts multiple times this year i don't know if that was a compliment or an insult I love it. And and it just shows how much people want to sign up and how much fun it is playing high school hockey yeah. here in Arizona. The question that I think a lot of people are, and especially the players are wondering is everyone's looking to get to division one. Everyone's looking to get to the championship. Can you confirm or deny if that championship will be back at Mullet arena this year for those players who are thinking, wow, I could play at a college hockey 5,000 seat arena this year. Oh, I'm sure it will. Um, I don't have a uh, a definitive date and time at this. I, I have a, a hold on a date, but I, I it's not publicly and there's not tickets for sale yet, so it's not it's not final at this moment. Um, but uh, Mullet, as much as we want to be in Mullet, Mullet wants us there as well. Um, they've been incredible the past couple of years, and and I think they see us as one of the more fun events that they do um, in that building. Uh, and we're gonna do everything in our power to to make that happen um at least for that game we are not you know scheduling permits whether or not we can do quarterfinals and semifinals but d1 will have a game there and then uh uh far too early to to speculate on d2 d3 and jv um because that's further down the road and we actually don't know when that schedule will complete until we get playing um but that was such a success last year that we'll do everything we can to to do those games there as well um, in some way, shape or form. Uh, so without a question, I think that's become a staple of ours that like, that's almost a non-negotiable at this point. But that's where those games are played. That's the expectation last year, like the year before another thriller in the championship game with Centennial and Notre Dame opening night is September 7th on that Saturday for all leagues. Everyone's ready to go. And for you players out there, Hey, you want to get to Mullet Arena, get to the D1 championship. That's a little motivation. Kenny, we thank you so much. And uh, we're going to put out a, a couple previews before the season starts. And then, of course, the streams on YouTube for everyone to enjoy and games to watch. Thanks, Dylan.